We are all very familiar with N21Net. It is also called PAT, Port Address Translation, or sometimes Net Overload. If you use routers which are based on Linux operating system, maybe you are familiar with the term masquerade as well. In the N21Net, multiple private IP addresses share a single public IP address. So the NAT device differentiates connections by using different source port numbers. However, there's another type of NAT is commonly called as one-to-one -one NAT. Interestingly, in the original RFC 2663, which defines NAT terminology, one-to-one -one NAT is called basic NAT. So in one-to-one -one NAT, each private IP address is mapped to its own unique public IP address. It has a lot of advantages if you compare to masquerade. For example, you will have predictable and simple mapping. It's easier for inbound connections from internet to your private network. And if you have multiple servers in your private network, each server can use the same parts without conflict. It also has a apparent disadvantage, which is you need more public IP addresses, so it's not scalable. This is my lab environment. I use a Unify UXG Pro as the gateway for this video. So this lab environment is within my main gateway, which means the one part IP address for the UX3 Pro is also private IP address. But it doesn't matter because when it comes to NAT, it works in the same way. So I'm going to use three different IP addresses for the one part for this video. It works in the same way if the one is directly connected to internet. Okay, in Unify Network Applications, in Network Settings, I have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 defined. I'm going to use VLAN 10 to simulate DMZ. I will run two Linux servers in the DMZ to provide services to the internet. Then I have another VLAN, VLAN 20. I'm going to use it to simulate LAN. In the lower part of the screen, the third window is for a machine in VLAN 20. Okay, to start the video, let's see without using one-to-one -one net, how we can rely on the regular masquerade net and port forwarding to enable the two servers so that they can provide services to the internet. In the two servers, I already launched browsers. You can see they are both providing web services and they are showing different contents, right? So we are good from this two servers perspective. Let's go to Unify Network Application to start our configurations. If I go to the internet setting for my primary one part, under the IPv4 configuration, I set it to static IP and I set the first IP here. Then I provided two additional IP addresses. So in this way, I'm simulating for this lab environment, there are three public IP addresses. Okay, I'm going to use this 101 to provide internet access to all other regular machines from the private network, but using these two additional ones to set up one-to-one -one net so that they are only used by the two DMZ servers. By the way, in the video, I'm going to refer to these three IP addresses as public IP addresses, even though they are not, but you know what I mean. Because now for the same one part, I have three public IP addresses, right? Just to confirm which one is used for internet access by default, I already launched a Wireshark monitoring the one part. Then from the three different Linux machines, let me ping 9999 just to see what's the IP address used in one part. So let me start from the server one, ping 9999 just once. You can see the 101 is used. In the right side, you can see 101 is the first IP address I provided, right? Then let's try server number two, the same 101. Then let me try the third machine, LAN client. 
the same result one on one. So by default, without any configuration, even though I have three IP addresses, only the first one is used. Okay, now let me achieve the effect for the two servers to be able to provide services without configuring one-to-one -one net. Let's simply use the masquerade net plus port forwarding. Let's check the current net rules. Go to policy engine for net. You can see there are two system generated masquerade rules by default. The second one is for secondary one part. We can ignore it. For the first rule is for primary one part. You can see the reason all the three Linux machines they use 101 is due to this masquerade rule. So the system hard coded to use the very first public IP, right? That explains, but we do not have any other net rules. Then if we check port forwarding, you can see I have no any port forwarding created yet. Now we are ready for the first DMZ server. I want to open the port 80 so that this particular web server can use the 102 IP address to provide service. To achieve that, I need to create a new port forwarding. Let me say port forwarding 102 port 80 to DMZ server 1. Then the one interface is primary one part, no problem. But the one IP address, I want to choose 102. I don't want to use the main IP address. And then for the part, for this particular port forwarding, I only want to open up port 80. Then the forwarded IP address, I need to specify the server 1's IP address, which is 192.168.10.66. And the forward part, should be 80 is tcp udp okay add is created then quickly create a second port forwarding for the server number two this time choose the 103 ip address create okay now we have the two rules ready then from this virtual machine which is running outside of this lab environment from the one part let me use a browser try to access the three public IP addresses of this lab environment. Try the first public IP address, 101. There's nothing that's expected. Then let me change it to 102. See, it's showing the server one's web page. Then let me try 103. Okay, it's server two, right? It works exactly as we expect. So then you may ask, this port forwarding plus masquerade rule already works perfectly. What's the point to implement one-to-one -one net? Yes, if you only want to provide one service from each server, maybe this way works for you, right? But what if for this server you have multiple services to provide, then you have to create multiple port forwarding. That's time consuming and that leads to a lot of future maintenance effort. For example, from this DMZ server one, you can see it does provide SSH service, right? However, if from the outside machine, if I try the public IP address, you can see it doesn't work. Why? Because we haven't opened up the port 22 for SSH service, right? So this is the disadvantage of using the port forwarding approach. In fact, by implementing port forwarding, we are only trying to simulate the one-to-one -one net in this direction, the DNet direction. We haven't done anything in the other direction yet. Right? At this moment, if we try to access internet from these two DMZ servers, they will still use the original 101 IP address. So we are not really done with the setup yet. But in the interest of time, I won't talk about this direction. But you may already realize if we don't implement real one-to-one -one net, there will be a lot of maintenance effort waiting. Now let's try one-to-one -one net. Before configuring one-to-one -one net, let me delete the port forwarding we created in previous scenario. Remove all. Then if I go to net, we only have the two system generated default 
masquerade rule, right? I don't want to touch them. Instead, I want to create new net rules. So let me create a new policy. It's net, then give it a name, one to one net, as net for DMZ server one. For net type, I need to choose source net. It is still primary one part. For the translated IP address, I want to select 102. Remember, I want to map this 102 to the DMZ server one, right? Then IPv4, no problem. For protocol, I leave it to all because this is for one-to-one -one net. I want to transparently map everything between the public IP address and the private IP address, right? So then for source, this is SNET. So I need to specify the source IP address specific. And here I need to provide the private IP address for the DMZ server one. Then for destination, I don't care because this is one-to-one -one net. I'm good. Add. Yeah, it's created. We are not done yet because we need to create a net for the other direction. It should be a DNet rule. Let me create a new policy. It's net, then give it a name, one to one net, DNet for DMZ server one. For net type, I need to change it to DNet. So this time I need to provide the translated IP address. Don't be confused, even this input box is right after the one part. Here, what we are talking about is the private IP address of the server two, because we are creating a DNet rule. So the translated IP address should be the private IP address. This is the private IP address for server one protocol or because it's one to one net. For source, I don't care because this rule is DNet rule. And for destination, I need to specify the IP address because this is DNet, right? I don't need to input it. I can simply select interface IP, then choose the 102 because I want to map this public IP address to the private IP address of server one, right? So therefore part is any, I'm done, add. Okay, we have the two net rules created for the first server. Let's validate whether it works or not. From this Linux machine, which is outside of the lab environment, it's in the one part. Let me try the 101 IP address first. Okay, it's spinning as expected. We are good. Then try 102. Yes, you can see it's correctly connected to the first server, right? Then let me try 103. It seems it's connecting to the server too, but it's just because of the cache of our previous try. So if I force a refresh, you can see it's spinning. It cannot connect to the server too. In fact, what we just proved was the DNet rule worked. So then let me try another way, which is from these two servers, let me try to access internet to see whether they are using the expected public IP to access internet. Oh, I just realized when I create the SNET rule, I had a typo. So the source IP address is in VLAN 10, it's .10.66. Okay, apply changes. Okay, let me repeat the ping testing to validate whether the SNET rule works. I already restarted Wireshark from the DMZ server one. Let me ping 9999. Okay, see the source IP address is 102, exactly as we specified in the SNET rule, right? Then from the server number two, do the same thing. Okay, see the source IP address is 101. Why? Because we haven't created the one-to-one -one net for the server two yet. That's why it is still using the masquerade rule. That's why the IP address is 101, right? Then for the regular LAN client, I expect to see 101 as well. Exactly, it's 101. Okay, for the DMZ server one, the testing was successful. Now let me quickly create the one-to-one -one net for server two. So I will fast forward because it works in the exactly same way as the server one. Okay, I created the second pair of net rules for the server number two. So let me reuse the existing Wireshark. Then from the server two, let me ping 9999 again. 
Okay, see, this time it is using 103, exactly as what we want. Then let's repeat the testing in server 1. Okay, it is still using 102. Then let me go back to the Linux client, which is in the 1 part. Then let me revisit 103, refresh. Okay, see, it is successfully connected to server 2. If I switch to 102, Okay, successfully connect to 101. But remember the reason we implement one-to-one -one net instead of regular port forwarding is to make sure all the ports, all the services will be automatically mapped, right? So then let me try to SSH to the two DMZ servers to see whether it works. So from the one part, from the internet, let me SSH using the public IP address. So let me try 102 first. Okay, it's successful. What about 103? Yeah, also successful. So now you see the effect, right? I only enable the one-to-one -one net for the two servers. All the services are automatically mapped. You see the effect of one-to-one -one net already. Before ending this video, let's SSH into the backend to see how these four net rules are implemented. I already SSH to the UX3 Pro. Let me show you the IP tables. I only want to see the net table. Let me show you the SNET part first. See this chain, the post routing chain, it is for SNET. So you can see three SNET rules. You may know, in fact, masquerade rule. Technically, it's just a special SNET rule. So that's why you see three of them. The first SNET rule, as long as the source is from the first DMZ server, it doesn't matter what's the destination, it will be translated to this IP address, which is the public IP I want to map to. And the second SNET works in the same way, but it's for the server 2, right? And see the masquerade rule, it maps from anywhere to anywhere, as long as the source IP address is not one of the three one public IP addresses. You may realize there are some overlapping between these two SNET and this existing masquerade. But why it doesn't matter in our testing, all of our testing were successful, because this masquerade rule is at the end. If these two SNET rules are successful, this masquerade rule will not be executed. So that's why in our testing, if it's DMZ server 1, it will only execute this one. If it's DMZ server 2, it will only execute the second SNET. If it's other LAN clients, it will only execute this masquerade rule. This is for the SNET rules. So if you continue looking, see this part for pre-routing, this is for DNET rule. This is relatively simpler. The reason is we don't have masquerade rule here. It's just the two DNET rules we created. Okay, I hope it's clear. By the way, even though the SNET rule and the masquerade rules, their sequence is very important from the UI, even if you want to make mistake, it's not possible. Let me show you what I mean. On the UI, if you say reorder, if you try to drag the SNET rule after the masquerade rule, it's impossible. The system doesn't allow you. Okay. That's just an interesting thing I want to point out. So this video is just for one-to-one -one net. I'm not saying this one is recommended for all the scenarios and you can forget about port forwarding. You can rely on one-to-one -one net. Of course, it's not the case, right? In fact, I'm going to have my next video regarding two firewall DMZ setup. So that's why I have this one-to-one -one net rule, which is related to next video. Okay, thanks for watching.